So the novel coronavirus 19 is a scary thing, but there are some basic steps that you can take to keep yourself and those around you safe. It just so happens that a lot of those overlap with what's already done in many tattoo parlors. Welcome back to Incademic. I'm your host, The Professor, and on this timely episode, we're looking at different ways that your local tattoo parlor can provide examples for how you can stay safe during the COVID-19 upcoming pandemic. So let's talk about the big scary elephant in the room. Your chances of getting COVID-19 are highly dependent on the actions taken by you and those that you surround yourself with, whether voluntarily or involuntarily. The same is true for, say, getting a tattoo infected. And much like an infected tattoo, COVID-19 is mild to non-existent in children. <laughs> Stupid joke. That said, for context, at the end of February 2020, the seasonal flu's fatality rate is somewhere between 0.01 and 0.1%. Compare that to COVID-19, which, again, as of the end of February 2020, has a fatality rate of about 2%. What does that mean? It means the novel coronavirus is about 20 to 200 times more likely to kill you if you get it, compared to the flu. And thousands of people have already died this season from the flu, so please get your flu shot. It's not just going to help prevent the flu, but if you do get the flu, it will weaken your immune system, and you can have the flu and COVID-19 at the same time. How deadly it is isn't the only consideration, right? For example, back in 2003, SARS had a transmission rate of about three. Now what that means is each person that was infected could infect roughly three other people. I mean, that's like zombie outbreak numbers, right? But the novel coronavirus, COVID-19, has a transmission rate of four. So it's not just the fact that it can kill you, it's the fact that it spreads easily. Simple but effective steps were taken against SARS, and now it has been destroyed. And we can do the same thing with COVID-19. And I'm comparing the two because SARS and COVID-19 are both respiratory diseases. The difference here is, unlike COVID-19, your tattoo doesn't get infected because you have touched a doorknob that somebody else has touched and then you touch your face. Please stop doing this. Your infected tattoo, which is already very unlikely, is not going to infect someone else's, most likely. That said, prevention is key. So, there is overlap here. So let's take a look at the steps that your tattoo artist takes to keep not just you healthy, but also themselves. I and mean, these measures are typically legal for very good reason. So let's look at some of the things your shop does that you could apply to your own home life to help you stay safe against this novel coronavirus. Whether it's because you are unlucky enough to have come down with it, or you're just afraid of being exposed to it, period. So what steps does your local friendly tattoo artist take to prevent the transmission of diseases? First, hand cleanliness is absolutely key. 100% probably the most effective means of preventing this kind of transmission. For example, tattoo artists wear gloves, right? Good reason for that. It doesn't just keep you safe, it also keeps them safe. Some diseases like herpes simplex B can be transmitted with the tiniest amount of blood. So, gloves keep everybody safer. And next time you're getting a tattoo, watch how many times your artist changes their gloves. Any time they touch something that is not in their prepared area, glove change. For you, hand washing is the key. You're not gonna wear gloves all the time, so just wash your hands. Pick an antibacterial soap. I usually use something like Dial Gold because it's got a little bit of a moisturizing agent in it, so your hands don't dry out as much. If you don't have antibacterial soap around you or you can't get to a place where you can wash your hands, yes, alcohol-based hand sanitizer is fine. The most important thing is to stop touching your face, please. Oh, also, the temperature of the water when you're washing your hands, not really important, right? So if anybody ever tells you, oh, you have to use super hot water to kill that bacteria, kill those viruses, it's nonsense. Don't listen to them. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say explicitly, and links to all the content in the description below, that water temperature does not, quote, appear to affect microbe removal. However, warmer water may cause more skin irritation and is more environmentally costly. So here's how you wash your hands according to the CDC, whether you're trying to prevent novel coronavirus or you're just trying to keep your tattoo from being infected. First, wet your hands with clean running water. Second, turn off the tap. It saves water. Third, apply soap and lather vigorously. Really go at it. 
You need to do this for about 20 seconds. This is the important part. Palms, backs of your hands, getting your nails and whatnot. And if you're not sure exactly how long 20 seconds is and you don't trust yourself to actually do the counting, sing the happy birthday song to yourself twice. That's about the length of time you need. After that, rinse with clean water and then dry with either a clean towel or just air dry. That's fine too. Oh, and one final tip. If you're in a public restroom or something where they have the individual disposable paper towels or whatnot, after you're done drying your hands, use that paper towel to open the door when you leave and then throw that in the trash can. Little tip for you. Why? Because lots of people don't wash their hands. And you don't know if one of those people was in the bathroom right before you. And if you touched that doorknob right after you washed your hands and they touched it before you and they didn't, you just wasted all that time. That is how disease spreads. Well, one way. And before you ask, no, wearing masks is not all that effective for this kind of thing, especially for a virus. Masks are really used to help protect other people from something you might have. So a mask would stop you from sneezing out into the world. But one of those little face masks that you see, little papery, foldy things, like a surgeon's mask, a virus just walks right through that. It doesn't even see it. And people don't use it properly anyway. They like stick their finger up inside the mask and stuff. It's, don't bother. Unless you're a healthcare worker, fine. Next, you need access to clean water. How else are you gonna do all that handy hand washing? Uh, so here's the thing about COVID-19. It can take a couple weeks to actually show up, right? The incubation period means you're still, you still got it. You could still be spreading it, but you're not necessarily showing symptoms. That's two weeks. Now, do you have two weeks worth of water at home? Well, if you're watching this, you're probably connected to a municipal water system or you have access to a well or something like that. So you probably have access to water, yes. But what happens if that's the week that the city decides to do work outside, bust up all the pipes, and then you don't have running water? What are you going to do then? You're not leaving the house. I mean, stranger things have happened, right? And this is unlikely. Fine. In China right now, where their communities are stressed to the maximum, the water hasn't gone out. During the Spanish flu epidemic, the water didn't go out. But city work, right? So if you find yourself with access to water, but not what you would consider clean drinking water, yes, you can boil it. Boil, rolling boil, for one minute, minimum. Or if you're about 2,000 meters and up in elevation, that's like Mexico City, three minutes. What does this have to do with tattoo parlors, you ask? Let me tell you. In Washington State, for example, they require, by law, each tattoo parlor to have two different sinks at least. One for washing equipment, if everything isn't one-time disposable stuff, and one hand-washing sink for public use. Different water sources for different uses. I mean, it's hard to overstate just how much water we use on a daily basis, honestly. Access to it is incredibly important. What else can you do? Make sure that everything is separated and has its own place. Like a kitchen where food prep is done, a tattoo shop is really not all that different. It's set up in the same kind of way with stations that are separate. Why? To prevent cross-contamination. Simple as that. Just like in a kitchen, if you're deboning a chicken on a cutting board, you're not then gonna go over there with a loaf of bread and start cutting it on the same thing. That's just asking for trouble. Right? See, in tattoo parlors, they are required to have separate stations. So each place where you have an individual artist, they have to have their own spot. And they can't overlap, and they can't share. Each one of these places is typically called a workstation. You have to have a different spot for equipment cleaning. Again, if it's a location that doesn't use all disposable equipment. And a separate spot for waiting. For the clients and customers that come in and aren't quite ready to get in the chair yet, they have to have their own spot that's separate from everything else. Tattoo parlors also have to have a dedicated sharps disposal box. That's the red box with the kind of biohazard symbol on the front, right? Like you see in doctor's offices. All the workstations have to have floors that are non-porous and non-absorbent so they can be sanitized and cleaned easily. And the same goes for tabletops, any kind of surface, chairs for the clients. I mean, the list goes on. Are you sensing a theme here? How does this translate to your house? Well, you want to focus on the same things. So what should you focus on if you're at home and don't really want to have to go out? Well, single-use stuff, you know, individual hand wipe sanitizer things. That's good. Or if you just need to clean things, you know, clean the frequently used spots. Doorknobs, any kind of handle, countertops, anything. 
And if you do have to go out, shopping cart handles, money, especially. Wipe these things down. Avoid touching them if you can. I mean, this stuff isn't just dirty. It's literally dangerous in situations like this. Next up, what can you do at home like a tattoo parlor does to keep yourself safe and healthy? Well, stockpile some food. And stockpile maybe isn't the right word. Collect food that's not going to go bad, right? Non-perishable food. If you do need to stay home for two weeks, you're going to need some canned vegetables, right? It's one of the things tattoo parlors do, at least that I've seen recently, is have kind of a snack area where they're just giving out kind of free snacks to the customers. And that's awesome, having access to those kind of snacks for the clients. It helps your blood sugar stay level. It helps ward off that kind of hangry feeling, and that makes the experience better for everyone. Now, obviously, the kind of stuff on that table is just that. It's snacks, right? It's not meant to sustain you. It's meant to tide you over. So when you're going to the store and you're buying stuff to stock your pantry, you're going to need more than, like, Nutrigrain bars and bags of Funyuns. Also, it's good if you have a good stash of medication at home. Just like if you're going to go get a new tattoo, you want to make sure that you have your Aquaphor and your antibacterial soap, and, you know, you make sure that you have your anti-inflammatories. You know, all the stuff that you need so you don't have to worry about getting it later. Same is true right now for this COVID-19 scare. If you have a prescription medication, try to get an extra refill. If you know that you need, you know, something like aspirin every day, buy some extra aspirin. It's not crazy. It's just being prepared. And I don't mean being a prepper. I mean just simple steps to make the whole process easier. For those of you in cold areas, you know when you're expecting to get snowed in for a couple days? That, just, you know, times four. Whatever. Finally, entertainment. Now, entertainment's maybe not something that you think about that often when you're thinking about going and getting a new tattoo, but being housebound for two plus weeks during a COVID-19 self-quarantine, you're probably okay because you're home, you've got entertainment, chances are you're gonna have Netflix the entire time, right? But just like that, when you're getting tattooed, some people need a little bit of entertainment to help pass the time. And tattoo artists will tell you that everybody sits differently. Sits meaning spends time in the chair while under the needle. Some folks like to sit there, lay there, and have conversation, and you know, that's me. I like to learn about how things are working and what's going on and you know, get to know the tattoo artist. Some people need to sit there and squeeze the hand of the person they brought in because they're just struggling to get through the process in the first place. Other people just toss in their earbuds and kind of bliss out for a bit, and you know, it's all okay. So while you're probably fine for entertainment on both cases, home or sitting, what you really want to have access to is a completely charged power bank. If you're at home and the power goes out, you might have a hard time charging your phone, and you need to have access to a phone, in case of emergencies. If you're sitting down getting tattooed and you're spending the next four hours watching TikTok videos or something. So if you are unlucky enough to be both housebound and for your electricity to go out, that power bank's going to come in handy. Same for sitting in the chair. So do you need to lock yourself in your house for a couple weeks to avoid this? Most likely not. Should you take the actions and the routines of your favorite local tattoo artist as an example for how to keep you and your community safe? At least safe from COVID-19 as much as you can. Yeah. Yeah, you probably should. Again, just like you wouldn't voluntarily rub a new tattoo up against a bunch of doorknobs in a hospital, you're not going to go licking them either. Be smart. Make good decisions. Wash your hands. That said, if you are concerned about exposure to COVID-19, hopefully some of the things that we talked about in this video will help you keep safe and keep your community safe. And if you need to do a little two-week self-quarantine, maybe it helped with that too. And remember, quarantine is for people that are otherwise healthy, exposed possibly, but not sick. Isolation is for the sick. So hopefully some of the content in this video helped you when you get a new tattoo as well. And if you want more of this kind of content, please leave me a comment below, click on like, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, that's a lot of steps. And check out up here for another video on tattoo aftercare. In the meantime, if you do have to go out, stay safe. Thank you.